prophetic team that's been assigned to, to give out words to come on up. And as they're doing that, how many of you in here are grateful for what God has done this weekend? I mean, grateful. There has been a shift in the atmosphere that we could not do ourselves. And that's what we've been asking God for, is shift, Father, the things that are, I am unable to shift myself. Father, there's, there's some mountains that I've told them over and over to be removed, and they haven't budged. I can't, even, I can't even scratch some of the dirt off the thing. But the Lord has moved some mountains this weekend. And now we have a clear path. He has made a road where there was no road before. And I want you to, to get your offering ready. We're going to do offering right now. And there's a gratitude in my heart. And I'm not saying that to manipulate you. But there really is a gratitude that's in us. And when you get your offering ready, I want you to just hold it up. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a wave offering to God saying, ha, yeah. I don't take for granted what you've done and what you are doing with me. It's not over till it's over and it's not over yet. Yes, yes, yes. There was a song earlier, you know, I, I forgot who sang it, but I don't even know if it was in the conference, but it was a song saying, oh, if you, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand and the usher will give you an envelope. It was a song that said, you're going to live and not die, says God. Wow. Praise you, Before we take this, because there's somebody watching on the internet and, and I think one or two people here, that song is going to mean something to you. I don't know if you've got a diagnosis, a prognosis, or just your own thinking. But the Lord says, you're going to live and not die, says the Lord. And I'm looking right in the camera right now, and I'm looking at you, and I'm saying, it's a lie from the pit of hell. You're going to live and not die, says the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. And that thing is turning right now. So you guys can go ahead and, and, and release the buckets. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's just do it. I want you to give your best gift, but first give it to him as a wave offering. Just a wave offering. I remember you. I remember the things you've done for me. I remember the words you've given me. I remember... The miracles that I didn't even perceive at the time, I remember. And if you notice up here on either side on these brown boxes, we've got um, buckets because the Lord said put them out there because somebody's not gonna, somebody's not gonna be able to give, be, not because they're not able, but they don't have money, but because their heart just isn't ready to release it yet. So I put them there. So when you're ready, if that's you, put in your gift on purpose. The amount isn't the thing that God's after. It's the heart. And he wants to take your heart further than it's ever been before. And I speak to your heart right now and say, you're going to live and not die. You're going to live and not be dry. You're going to live and do great exploits in the name of the Lord. For the power of the Lord is in you. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what your, your situation in life is. You're going to live and not die. Now these ministers, we've got the, the registration here. We've been praying over the names. And uh, we have, you know, we, we sent it out to several people. But um, Gaynor got uh, her team, her, she has the Sears uh, ministry. She leads that. Um, where are you? Right here. I'm a, if I call your name, would you come up here, please? We're not going to do anything embarrassing, but we got words for you. And they're from God. Jane Perkins, Emmy Perry, Rod Mitchell, Paula Hines, Chris Bishop, Yoli, Larry Hicks, and Ken McDonald. We called your name, and I know some of them are ministering. 
but we'll get them later. But just, just come on up here. Come on up here. Again, Jane Perkins, Emmy Perry, Rod Mitchell, Paula Hines, Chris Bishop, Yoli, Larry Hicks, and Ken McDonald. Just come on up, all the way up. Come on up. Come on up. Yeah. Okay, if you guys can step back, if you guys can go back a little bit, that will be good. Okay. All right. Where's Ken? There he is. Okay, this is for you. Okay. Um, it's a flash of a vision. There's explosion, shattering glass, an American flag folded into a triangle. On one end of the shards of shattered glass is a reflection of a man. The Lord is bringing those fragments together into a new plane of glass, or pane of glass. The glass, I believe, represents the reflection of the man, a man who is made in the image of God, you. He is restoring the full image which has been shattered. The nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Jesus, the things which, were, which are impossible with man are possible with God. Next picture. A, that good that God would handpick people out of a list of names and give words and we have other words so if your name wasn't called don't think that God passed you by he didn't because these ministers have been praying for the ones that are in here and we're just gonna start off just calling whatever these ministers got from the Lord or are getting at this very moment they're gonna call it out Becky gave that word about incurable diseases. After worship this morning, I heard Jesus say, I'm going to heal the terminal. Those are the lost cases. Those the doctor said, give it up. Wow, yes. He is going to heal you yes. right now, either on the internet yes. or in this place or both. So if you have a diagnosis by a doctor or if the devil has told you she'll die and not live as Becky said you will live and not die Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith Jesus the author of life there is no death in Jesus Christ there is no defeat in Jesus Christ there is no destruction if, you, if, if, if you're here I want you to come up and Melanie and I are going to pray for you I personally have prayed for probably 10,000 people that were supposed to be dead. And they're not dead today. And that's just what God has done through me. There are others here whose faith are at the same level or above that level. But if you have a terminal diagnosis of any kind, let's say it's a diagnosis of chronic disease. There's no cure for epilepsy. You're not dying, but you're going to have epilepsy forever. That's not the truth. Jesus sets the captives free. Listen to me. Look at me. Jesus is here, right here, right this way. Jesus is the healer. He is the deliverer. He is the purveyor of life. He is resurrection and life. If you will come forward right now, Jesus is going to touch you. I and Melanie will physically touch you. We have a, we have a testimony right here. Yesterday, this precious lady, Sandy, could barely walk. Walk for us right now. Walk, walk. She could barely walk. Look at this. That's Jesus. That's Jesus Christ. That's a resurrection testimony, a fact of the Word of God, a fact of the power of God. Anyone else, anyone else that needs prayer because of a bad diagnosis, just come forward. Just come for anybody at all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody on the Internet? I want you now... This isn't a con job. I want you to touch your cell phone, whatever you're watching on. There is a transference of the anointing in Jesus' name. And Jesus is going to touch you. We're going to physically touch you here. But that's all we can do. We can touch you. The touch of Jesus is in our hand. If you're a believer, you all are. 
in your hand is the power and the righteousness and the presence of Jesus Christ. So as we touch these people, you're going to see the physical manifestation of the love and the power of Jesus, whose we are and whom we serve. And, and anybody who's got a testimony, meaning something that happened to you during the conference or, or say within the last six months, I want you to go to Pastor Brian, who's sitting up here in the blue shirt, because we want to release it. It'll, it'll be solidified once we testify of it with our mouths. So just go on up to him. And, and I just got a text right now. Somebody on the internet texted me and said, that was for me. The I'm going to live and not die. They're declaring it right now. They're receiving it right at this very moment. And we're agreeing with you right now. You will live and not die. We're in agreement. Can everybody stand up and point your hand to the, to the camera right there where the red light is? Faster, 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 faster. Come on. You're going to live and not die, says God. You're going to live and not die, says God. You're going to live and not die, says God. You're going to live and not die, says God. Amen. 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 Um, um, I feel that um, there's people here and possibly listening online that you are and have been for a really, really long time struggling with loneliness. And it's as a Christian, you know you're not meant to feel lonely because the Holy Spirit is with you, but you feel lonely. And you do things to try and eradicate that loneliness. Like maybe you smoke. Maybe you watch loads of TV. Maybe you hang around with people that you don't really want to hang around with. You've got ways of managing your loneliness. But I feel like the Lord wants to completely deliver you from every place of loneliness. And it's the kind of loneliness that you could be in a place packed full of people but you still feel so isolated you feel vulnerable you feel like you're an orphan even though you have family and you have friends and you have Jesus but you still feel like an orphan and Jesus wants to break that today right now and he wants to release his adoption over you so that you will never ever feel lonely again and if this is something that you have been battling with I want you to place your hand on your heart Jesus I thank you Jesus that you tell us that you never leave us nor ever forsake us you never leave us or forsake us. You never leave us or forsake us. You will never, you will never, you will never, you will never, you will never leave us nor forsake us. So in the name of Jesus, we break the back of loneliness. We come against every orphan spirit, every waif spirit, and we command it to come out now in the name of Jesus. And I release the spirit of adoption, the spirit of sonship. I release it over you right now. If you're watching online, I release sonship over you right now. You are not an orphan. You are not lonely. You are not isolated. You are not alone. You are loved. You are loved unconditionally. You are loved. The Father loves you. You are worthy. You are so worthy. The things that you're doing, they don't
don't define who you are. Your actions don't define who you are. You are who Jesus says you are. You are an image bearer of Christ. What you do doesn't define who you are. I just thank you, Jesus, that even in this moment, that your adoption would embrace every person who has battled with loneliness. And Jesus, I also break off those places where when these people are feeling lonely, they go to these places. They either drink or they smoke or they gossip or they watch carnal TV or maybe they even slice up their arms, Jesus. Maybe they self-harm, Lord Jesus. Maybe they have sex, I don't know. They do all kinds of crazy things to eradicate the loneliness. And I declare that today, that loneliness is eradicated and you are set free and you are adopted and you are a son and you are a son and you are a son. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. On Thursday, when we weren't prayer, um, the Lord showed me some um, I, a door and hinges on this door, and it was rusted. And Cammy, you said yesterday we were stuck. Well, we're st these hinges were so rusted they couldn't move. The doors couldn't move. And then I saw Holy Spirit come. The anointing come and remove all the rust. Like a WD-40 just came and sprayed the anointing all over these doors. And he just opened up those doors. And the captives were being set free. And then this morning he says, he said, he, he just brought Lazarus. I, I woke up with Lazarus. And he said, the, the, um, when Jesus told Lazarus to come forth and the sap claws were removed well come forth yeah. come forth yeah. you are set free yeah. you are set free who the son has set free is free indeed you're no longer in bondage you are no longer in bondage you have been set free through the blood of Jesus you have been set free you have been set free we all been set free I've been set free because I was stuck I'm no longer stuck in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Sada de Diada. You are free. Oh, Rabba Sada Diada. Thank you, Bro Shaka de Diada. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Is Catherine Wang here? What? Two testimonies. Come on, bring them on up. Woo! Yeah. So, Sunday will be three Sundays ago. And um, two years ago, I had three strokes. And those three strokes led me having brain damage and left me with epilepsy and I was paralyzed. And I came here almost, well, Sunday will be three Sundays ago, and they prayed for me. And I started to stand and start to walk. And then I came here for, well, God's touch. And now I'm walking and I'm running and I'm standing and I'm free. And I don't have any more seizures. And I could walk and I could run and I could stand and I'm free. And my children are here in this church with me. And they don't hold God responsible for me being sick anymore. But they give glory to God for me being free. And they gave their lives to God too. And I give all the glory to God in Jesus Christ. And if he could do it for me, he could do it for Amen. you. Come and on. I thank you, Jesus. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Come on. If it happens to one, yes. it happens to everybody. The door has been open. Receive your healing. Receive your ability to walk where you couldn't walk before. We 
have one more testimony. All right. Um, this happened actually 16 months ago. Um, my husband wasn't feeling well. I was at Jubilee. He was at home, 35 miles away. And he called me and he said, I'm not feeling well. And he couldn't describe what he was feeling, but I hung up and dialed 911. So I left Jubilee, went home, 35 minutes later, arrived and they had loaded him into the ambulance. They didn't know what was happening. And um, I said, well, when you let me know what hospital you take him to, I'll meet you there. And as I was walking away, the Lord turned me around. And I said, honey, by the way, and I slapped him on the foot. And I said, you will live and not die today. And they transported him to UCLA, Santa Monica. I took my sweet time getting there because I had already declared it. He would live and not die. And unbeknownst to me, five minutes into the ambulance ride, he went into full cardiac arrest. They call it a catastrophic event because his lungs collapsed and his heart quit. So by the time I got to the UCLA Santa Monica in the waiting room, the ER doctor came out and said, what do you know? And I said, well, I put him, my husband in the ambulance an hour ago and here I am. And he told me about the event and he said, he's very, very sick. He's probably not going to make it. And I said, no, he'll be okay. And he said he went into, had a catastrophic heart attack and people don't really come back from this. And I said, he'll be okay because he's covered with the blood of Jesus. And he said, well, let me say this. I declared time of death. He had had 50 minutes of CPR. He was not going to come back. 50, five, zero. We don't do that normally, but he's not coming back. And I said, well, well so what happened? He goes, I walked away. I go, and what happened? He said his heart started beating on its own. And I said, well, there you go. And he goes, you know, I'm going to get somebody else to talk to you. Wow. And 10 minutes later, I'm standing outside the emergency OR. A doctor came yelling out, Mrs. Hartley, Mrs. Hartley, he lives. It's a miracle. Amen. It was a long 30 days in the hospital but he is 100% back today. He left the hospital with zero kidney function. Wow. They said he's probably gonna need dialysis for the rest of his life. He had three dialysis and his kidneys were back within three weeks after the heart attack. Great. So I'm declaring today that you will live and not die. Whoever's out there that thinks that, that there's no hope this came by faith. I never shed a tear. Nobody could understand it. When we go down to UCLA now for checkups, all the doctors say, oh, there's Miracle Boy. Yeah, they call him right. the Miracle Boy. Amen. Thank you, amen. Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Come on. Come on, come on. That's my God. You're going to live and not die, says God. You're going to live and not die, says God. Today, 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 right now, you're going to live. Where are you dead? Where are you dry? Come on, today. Tell it to awaken. Tell it to get up. Tell it to get up. Tell those spiritual legs to start working. Come on, start moving. I have a word for you. The Lord says to tell you, Catherine, you are the one of the most beloved of his daughters. Yes, you are. But you're going to start moving in that love, and it's transferable. He wants you to start giving it away. He says, there's been times where you may have been misunderstood, but the Lord is coming right now and healing the peace of that heart that has been misunderstood. And he's making that your, that, that weak spot is, is his strong spot. And from that place, you have authority 
to release love and acceptance to people. And he says, well done, for you have walked upright before me. You have sought me when others would have fallen. You have loved me when others would have cursed me. And the Lord has seen, and the Lord has heard, and the Lord has answered. Amen. Worship, I pick is, I don't know why, I don't know, or uh, open my eyes in wonder. Mm. And uh, when I go to the woman's uh, prayer, Mary, me, uh, Mary Crew pray for me. Oh, she says, she said, Catherine, I see the wheel open, widely open for you. I said, yeah, I'm jumping happy over and with my kids. Amen, <laughs> and, amen, uh, amen. So it's. I strongly receive and believe that wow. the Lord has opened my eyes and wonder. Amen. And uh, this year, it's a blessed year. Amen. And uh, in Israel, at the Sukkah, and we'll pray. The Lord give me, Holy Spirit, give me the words. Uh, it's uh, um, uh, Psalm 102, 13. It says the time has set, the set time has come for grace and the mercy. Amen. Amen. We receive that. The grace and the mercy. It's the set time from the Lord for every one of us. Amen. Yeah, Father, we just want to declare in high places, Lord, unity in Jesus' name. When with power of agreement, Father, we just declare that, Lord, every, for everyone here, Father, in Jesus' name, when they occupy the high places, whether this is the job, home position, Father, church, or anything else, Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you give them strength. And I just want to agree with my sister. She had such a word of opening the door, so you share it. <laughs> this is the year of the portal it's the open door it's not the closed door wow. and the lord is going to open doors for each and every one of us that have never been opened before we're going to walk through what we've never walked through before but we're going to say yes even though we don't know what's on the other side in the name of jesus Lord gave me a word, but before I give a word, I want to praise him because when I entered this uh, conference, I'd ask God if he would heal me of my problems with my thoughts. And from the first talk on, everything's pretty much been about thoughts. And I woke up this morning like a vacuum cleaner had moved into my mind. I'm even rarely getting a thought the whole day about anything. So it's like, divine peace has just come in whereas before it was just warfare between me and the enemy so um, I just want to praise him for what he uh, what he's done and what he's done in me and if that's any indication of things that we're waiting for what Steve prayed over last night uh, heaven knows what else other people have coming um, Friday night God gave me a prophetic word I'm gonna tr try to go back to it because but it was pretty well covered by what was said. And um, what the Lord was saying was that, as in Revelation 4, it says, a door is open in heaven, come on up here, and I'll show you the things that are to come. And we've been called up this whole conference, but we're not just called up. God wants to show us the things that are to come. The things that are the new things in life. Not what we have learned from before, but new things that we have not experienced yet. So Lord, I call forth the new things that you see in our life yes. that are to come, that we don't know about. Lord, we leave our promises behind. We leave what we think you're gonna do in our lives behind. 
We leave behind, Lord, all the presumptions and things that people say about us or what we are or what we're going to become or what we aren't going to become. And we look forward, Lord. You raise us up and you say, look forward to those things which, which are about to come in our lives. So, Lord, we, we take your word into our life, Lord, for your word is alive and new. You want to show us the things that are to come. So, Lord, we ask for your things to manifest in our lives, to work in our lives, to become our lives, to direct us in our lives. Oh, God, I ask you to bring this about now in everyone who is situated in this place, that they truly will see a new door, a new life, a new way, a new path that they have not seen before in the name of Jesus. that the Lord is it on yeah okay the word that the Lord gave me is he says he's um, healing fear yes, yes. but the fear of going to talk to the Lord at times we say I don't really want to talk to him I don't really want to find out what he has to say because maybe I can't really do that or I don't have the means, or I don't have the finances, and I better not ask because I don't really want to know. So he is removing that fear of our lives, of, of going to see him and to talk to him about anything, and he's giving us a new boldness, a totally new boldness. We'll be like the giants in the land that are going to fight for, for him, and we're going to be the ones that are going to go into battle and do battle for him. And it doesn't matter what the enemy says. It doesn't matter what the others have to say. We're just going to go forward and they're going to say, and who is that? And who does she think he is? Or who does he think that he is? We're just going to go ahead to what the assignment that the Lord has given us, the anointing, the new uh, things that he has talked to us. We're just going to go forward, and we're not going to go and interfere. We're just going to go forward and declare what the Lord has given and put into our hands, and we're going to go and succeed because that's what he says that we are. We are victorious in him, and we are not going to fail in the name of Jesus. If you need a, a healing in your body, I'm going to ask Sue to bring the members of your team that are not up here. If you would just bring them up front, because God wants to heal. The, I just feel like the healing anointing has just entered in, and he wants to go into and just supernaturally heal. Supernaturally heal. Supernaturally heal. There is a strength in healing. And you on the internet who is watching, whatever is imparted here is imparted to you. And I speak a double portion to you. A double portion. You already know you're going to live and not die, but you're going to live in abundance. You're going to live beyond what you were living before. There is a multiplication to you. And also, I just want to call out um, financial breakthrough. Somebody in here needs a, a breakthrough in their finances. And I'm not talking because you might be late on one bill or something. I'm being really, you need a breakthrough. You've had season upon season upon season where it seems like you make a dollar and you lose two dollars. That kind of a thing. I just pray over you right now in the name of Jesus that that season is over. I command it to stop and desist right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. And I speak abundance and I speak the floodgates of heaven. I even speak your mindset that had a poverty mentality on it. It's being switched right now in Jesus' name. And you're, getting, you're, you're starting to operate in the mind of Christ because you're starting to see you and the situations around you in a different light. You're starting to see them from the perspective of heaven. The Lord your God is fighting for you and will bring great liberty in that area. Um, yeah, I also feel that um, there is someone who doesn't want to be in their job anymore and they're like really struggling because they're trying to be joyful, 
but they feel that they are no longer meant to be in the job that they're meant to be in. And they are trying to work out, like rationalizing their own understanding. They're trying to work out, like, how am I going to leave this job? If I apply for this, what will I do? You know, how will I pay for that? Um, where can I go? What qualifications have I got? And I feel that the Lord just wants you to enter into a fresh place of rest, like, and stop. Um, uh, the self-effort. He wants to just break that off. He wants you to trust him. He wants you not to actually try and work out in your own understanding how you're going to leave this job, but he wants you to believe that he will do it and he will do it supernaturally. And he can and will bring you the job of your dreams if you stop trying to work out how you're going to get it for yourself. So just believe him, just trust. Don't try and work it out for yourself. He has got an amazing job for you. Just enter into rest and it will manifest at the perfect time. Yeah, yeah there's one more thing I just got right now and then I'm going to hand it over to Rob. There's a young child who has just started like preschool for the first time. Um, and he's been um, suffering with a lot of fear and it's manifested in kind of naughtiness or saying no or just you know, that kind of a thing. And the Lord right now is removing that thing from that young man because that young little boy has a call of God on his life for greatness later on. The Lord is going to use him in mighty ways. And the hand of the Lord is on him, and I see him pulling that thing off of him, that fear, that intimidation, that, that, that wanting, wanting to, to suck for a long time. And he's, and he's, and he's like strengthening him right now. And he's going it, to, it'll be a suddenly for that young boy. And I just call it into him right now in the name of Jesus. As is typical during conferences, God totally raises our faith level and blows what we expect of ourselves and of him out of the building. And a friend of mine gave me a testimony this morning about a promise of hers being fulfilled. And I felt like God saying, take the faith that you've received during the conference, keep it going in your day-to-day -day life as you go through tomorrow at church, as you go to Monday to work. And what he wants to do is he wants to fulfill one of your biggest promises. He wants you to think about it and really pray into it of what's the one thing I want. And God's saying this is the season of fulfilling those promises that have been spoken over you, that you've held tight, that you've wanted. He wants to release it. He wants to see it become a reality. And yeah. to be able to just to grasp it, grab a hold of it, and run with it. Don't be shy. He's ready to answer any promise that you have. So I just, I just release a blessing over you that you can really find that one thing that you want answered, that one thing that you need, whether it's job, whether it's financial, whether it's a, a healing, that you receive that. God, I ask that you just bless each person with the receipt of a promise that you have spoken over their life and for the faith to receive it and the faith to keep going on for even bigger promises in Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Holy Spirit, give me the words to speak. Yes. Just your words. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I also this morning during prayer heard that all things have passed away. But our God doesn't just mean the negative all things have passed away. Right, right. For those of us who have, are a little up in years, um, the, the Lord wants to say that our latter days are going to be greater than our former days. Wow. And that no matter how the Holy Spirit moved to use us for healing or prophecy or anything else, that is also gone away because the Holy Spirit is new every day. And what he's going to do is a new thing because it is a new day. He's going to do greater things than he's done before. And he's going to use those of you who feel that you're already up 
on the top of the hill and are on your way down, uh-uh, you're not finished. He's going to use you. He's going to use you in a greater depth than he did up to this point in your lives. And so, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you that you are new every day, and that's why you bring newness in each of us. And I thank you, Lord, that you're instilling. Let's face it, some of the greatest works that God does is when we feel our worst, when we feel ugly and damaged, that we have nothing to give. And God operates through us anyway because he is the one who wants to be glorified. He's the one that wants to continue doing great things for others. And so, Lord, I just thank you that, and I pray a greater anointing in the name of Jesus on your people, on your elderly people, on your over 40 group, over 60 group, over 70 group, over 80 group, because you're not finished, you've just begun. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll take that one too. The Lord has been showing me over the last few days uh, just the bubbling up of his spirit. Like it's just rising in the room. Um, and he showed me the other day, like we were just sitting waiting in this. It's He's so much thicker than water. And we're just moving and we're waiting and it just keeps getting higher and higher. And he's just saying, <clears throat> look at me filling this room. Look at you just bathing in who I am. Look at you taking and becoming me, just letting me in. And it's just progressive from Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And, um, and for a moment today, I turned and I didn't see it. And I said, where are you, Lord? And he said, I don't care if you don't see me. I'm here. It's not about whether you feel me. Because I said I'll never leave you or forsake you. So it doesn't matter if you don't see me or if you're not feeling me. I am right here with you. And then he said, what I was showing you is that you guys are allowed to baptize yourself right now in me not a water it's just the presence is so real that you can just kind of reach over and just accept holy spirit and just splash him onto you just start to baptize the, the action of taking control of your identity and your relationship with god is right here the, that action can take place right now when you start to say yes God and you start to receive him and you start to make action toward receiving God onto you receiving God onto you and saying Lord I don't know I can't exactly see you right now I can't exactly feel you right now but I know that you are here and I'm saying yes I'm receiving you in this atmosphere there is not an upper room that I'm looking for because the upper room experience was their experience this experience right now with you Holy Spirit is the experience that is going to change my life this experience right now is me jumping all the way into love with you have another testimony so we're gonna go ahead and give that go ahead and tell us hi my name is May and I came in here not sure what uh, power shop I was going to attend I uh, have visited the prayer healing rooms before and been prayed for and received um, healing but I uh, I went over there and I signed in the and got my paper wrote down my request and then I, I sat there I was in seat six and everybody passed me by and I kind of feel like that was how my life has been that, you know, the crowds bring the, uh, the vast crowds bring the people in who need healing and deliverance and God heals them. But it seems like that he's just too busy to deal with me. So I was going to just uh, leave quietly and not say anything to anybody. And um, I was walking through the door to put my paper down with my prayer request on it. And the door opened and they said, did you receive prayer? And I said, well, no, I, I didn't. But uh, they said, you must have left the area. And I said, no, I stayed there the whole time. 
And then uh, the door opened and uh, the healing ministry was coming, stepping out. And they said, uh, what, what would you like us to pray about? So I told them that I was having problems with my brain and the back of my head with pain. And um, I have sleep apnea. And um, I, it, along with it, I get stressed and I get sleepy. And um, it seems like that I, I won't wake up. And I feel like the Lord is wanting me to wake up. And I know that I've been told that too. So uh, he prayed for my head and he prayed for my brain and he prayed for my neck and um, actually gave me prayer for my whole body. So I just want to declare that, that uh, you are my God who forgives and heals all my sins and diseases. It is your spirit and word that lives in me and brings health and healing to every part of my body. I receive my sight, healing of my brain, and, and relational stress and pain. Thank you for my healing and please encourage others in their faith by my testimony. I wanna praise and thank him and give glory to his power in Jesus name, amen. 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 If, you have, are you, if you guys need healing in that area, your brain, if you have sleep apnea or even trouble sleeping, stress, Anything like that, I want May, who now has authority over those things, to pray for you. So come on up to May. Let her lay hands on you and cast those things out of you. Right here. This is May right here. Right here. Come on up if you need prayer. That's funny because I got a little earlier that the Lord was going to uh, d uh, deliver people from sleep apnea and sleep-related problems. The inability to sleep, the tension, the, the, the stress. He's just removing that right now. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. If you have not received a prophetic dance over you, go over to the dance area. There is an anointing that's coming from that direction that I know the Lord wants to release to some of you in here. So go on over and let him dance over you. There's strength in beauty. There is strength in gentleness. There is strength in the things of the Lord.
Sherry, uh, Sherry Hicks, I have a word for you. Can you raise these up so we don't have to yell? The Lord says to tell you there is a, a breakthrough that you've already had, except you're not aware of it. And the Lord says the things you have been crying about, I mean really crying, I mean literally tears crying. The Lord says he's answered those things and all he wants you to do is start confessing that they're yours, that they're already done, already done. Your home is saved. Your home, salvation has come to your home. Salvation and healing and deliverance has come to your home. You are a carrier of his glory. You are a carrier of the anointing. You have within you that which needs to be released because there are people in your house who are waiting for that thing. And the Lord says he has now imparted that unction in you and it's going to come out when you least expect it. It won't be something you have to muster up or do. The Lord himself will speak right through you. Praise you, Father. Praise you. Is Susan Johnson still here? Susan Johnson? I don't know if you're here or not, but the Lord says to tell you there is a, a healing that is coming to you right now. There is a manifested healing that's being imparted to you right now. Right where you are, the Lord says he is reaching in and touching that area and manifestly healing right now. I'm going to ask the ministers to go quickly now and just lay hands and impart. And I want all the ministers of the house to start, start forming a, a, a glory tunnel. We're going to just impart fire to everybody. So if you're a minister of the house, I want you to start coming on the left and the right. I think we have if we have another um, or two more. We have a couple of. The, I'm telling you, nothing will increase your faith like the testimony that's spoken out of what the Lord's goodness. Yeah. So we have a couple more testimonies. So this is the net. Okay, so I was um, in the soak room yesterday afternoon, and um, I was having a wonderful time, but all of a sudden I got into incredible pain. It was definitely a 10. And um, so I thought, well, maybe I better run over to the healing room. So I scooted on over to the healing rooms, and, uh, and I got prayer, and the pain went from like a 10 to a 1 almost immediately. And I explained that I have been, about a year and a half ago, I was diagnosed that I had actually a congenital situation which caused when I drank too much fluid, uh, it, my body couldn't process it, so I would get into incredible pain. And um, that they said normally they do surgery on that now in infants, but I'm 67, so why bother? You know, so I said, okay, but I've been having these episodes, but since that time of prayer, by the time I got home, the pain was completely gone, and I know that God has done the surgery, so thank you, Jesus. Hi, my name is Mary Francis, and I had two healings. Thursday, I went into the healing rooms because on September the 17th, I had a fall at Walmart and fell completely face down. I've got a cut. 
I didn't need to go to the hospital or anything, but from my neck down, I was jammed and I was in a lot of pain. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't move well. So I went in the healing rooms and Karen and Lori prayed with me and they kept saying, we just plead the blood of Jesus, his healing blood over you. But in my spiritual realm, I saw the Lord says, no, it's not on the outside. I want you to look on the inside. And he showed me that his blood was bubbling up inside of me and he was taking all that pain. So I'm pain free. I'm able to twist and move and able to sleep. Now my second healing just happened with Larry and his wife. I was diagnosed with type two diabetes over 20 years ago. And lately I have not been able to bring my blood sugar down. It's been going up to 200 or more. And then I'd have this craving of sugar and I'm going, what is going on? And then I'd go to bed at night and having a fear I was gonna die. So Larry had me put my right hand and he says, I want you to just slowly move your hand down and say, go. And as I did that, I felt something go. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit says you need to repent for fear, doubt, and unbelief. So I began to repent for that. And I am healed of diabetes. I am healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Praise you, Father. Praise you. 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 The young man in the back that's been pacing back and forth with the fleece jacket, I don't know your name, but I have a feeling that I wouldn't be able to pronounce it if I did know it. And the Lord says to tell you, you have not made a trip that you've made lately. I don't know if it's this trip or a trip. You have not made that in vain. And the Lord has seen your heart and he calls you one of his ministers. He calls you having uh, an, an abiding presence that you have walked in and know how to maneuver in meaning you're not embarrassed by it you're not shy about it you know the presence of the Lord you're a man who knows the holiness of God and the Lord says that he has is opening a door for you um, a, a, an extravagant door you have um, asked for much but the Lord says it's not even close to what he's giving you right now there is an, I keep hearing that word extravagant over him. There is an extravagant gift with your name on it. And the Lord says, well done. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Because as you, as you impart to others, it'll be given back to you double. So open your mouth. He's going to fill it. And you're going to be moving in the gifts of the Spirit in an increased way. You're a man of logic, but he's taking you into being a man of abandonment and not even caring. And you're gonna be made a fool for Christ and you're gonna love it. But that's not even your nature, your natural nature, but the Lord is just bypassing your natural nature and he's gonna make you just a fool for Christ. Okay, now the healing ministers, if you can start now, healing ministers, Richard, Richard, we're gonna stop now and we're going to fit, we're going to do a, um, a fire tunnel. So I want, would you help get all the ministers in one end and the other and start imparting fire to people? Because it's good to pray many words sometimes, but right now many words are not needed. You have fire in your hands, Richard, and I can see it. You have fire in your hands. Right now, it's not coming out of your mouth. It's coming out of your hands. And everyone you lay hands on will receive the fire of God. So, Sue, ministers, if you, if you can stop, Larry, if you can stop and go on both sides, we're going to do this fire tunnel now, and you're going to impart. I know we're used to doing healings, deliverances, and all that a certain way. But God wants you to impart a fire that is inside of you in a twinkling of an eye. You don't even need to talk to the person. You don't need to do anything. You're going to lay hands on them. They're going to recover. They're going to be set free. They're going to be filled with fire. So if you're a minister of this house of Commonwealth or of another church, I want you to be the ones who make this tunnel. 
And if you guys could bring the hoopah right here. I was told the hoopah represents a marriage. So the Lord says you're his beloved. You're the one who is his beloved. And if you want the fire of God, I want you to start on this end. Over here, start under the hoop. And you're going to come to the right. Larry, this way. This way, Larry. You're going to come this way. Because that's the beginning. Okay, now start getting ready. Start getting ready. Start getting ready. Remove, re see it. See the fire in your hands. Come on. You don't need to give words. You don't need to pray. You don't need to do all the stuff that comes from you. God says right now there's a fire being released to the body of Christ. Come on. Come on. Release the fire. 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 Come on, release the fire inside of you. Not the way you normally do it. Let's let God be God. Let's let God be God. I need the children laying hands. I need the children imparting the fire. They got it in them. You got a baby. Come on, let that baby just, just go like this. The Lord says there's power in your submission to me. There is power in your submission to my spirit. There is power in you laying down your flesh on the altar and allowing my spirit to rise up within you. You are my bride. I am your bridegroom lover, says the Lord. And I have come to love on you, my dear, my dear. Come, let me love on you. You are mine. This is a time of consecration to me. This is a time of your heart saying yes all over again without your own expectations of what it needs to look like because I have promises to fulfill over your life and only I say how it's going to come to be. So don't look at what's going on right now. Look at me. Keep your eyes on me. The bubble's going to pop and you're going to walk right into it. And you're going to be so blessed. You're going to be so blessed, says the Lord. Come, let me love on you, my dear. Submit, submit. Submit, submit. There's power in your submission. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fall on me. 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 Come on. Come on. Believe you receive. Get the fire of the Lord. Let the fire of the Lord consume that which was hurting you before. There is power in the blood. There is power in the name. Step into the name of the Lord Most High. Step into the God of creation. The one who created heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. Let the fire of God overwhelm you. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding come upon you. Fire, Lord Jesus. Fire, Lord Jesus. Burn away everything that cannot stand in your presence, Lord Jesus. Fire, Lord Jesus. You make all things new, Lord God. I ask that you baptize us right now in the fire of your spirit. That the only thing left in who we are is the truth of who you are, Jesus Christ. Lord, I ask that they enter in broken and they come in renewed and restored, Lord God. 
that there is a building and a creating happening through the process of the walking out and the saying yes and the activation of our spirit right now, Lord. Lord, we declare life where there is no life. We say yes where the world has said no, God. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. In Jesus' name, we speak fire over you right now from your inner being, from the inner side, inside of you. We just speak it bubbling up. We can see it. It's bubbling up in each one of you. Jesus is asking you to ask him for the fire. He wants to give it to you. You have to be vocal. You got to say, Father, give me that fire. Give me that fire that they're talking about. Give it to me. I want it. I want it desperately. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yoli, Yolanda, come on up. If you don't have the words, pray in tongues. Pray as loud as you can in tongues. You are a carrier of his fire. You are a carrier of his glory. The Lord has descended upon your life. You will never be the same, for the Lord your God is with you. The fire, 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 the the fire, 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 the the fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire, the fire, the fire, the consuming fire, the consuming fire, the consuming fire, consume them all, consume them all. Bro, suck it up, or transformation, transformation, the abrasive rearrangement that the bros of the Pacadia, the bros shook at the Pacadia, the Glora Pasik at the Pacadia, the bros shook at the Pacadia, the Glora Pasik at the Pacadia, the bros shook at the Pacadia. Thank you for the Kadap, the Shukadap, the Adap, the Adap. Receive it, receive it, receive the fire, receive the fire, receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Just don't walk through the tunnel. Receive it, receive it, it's there. Hold up, I see the dead, the Adap. Hold up, I see the Adap. Hold up, I see the Adap. Show the Pacadia, the Bros. of the Adam. Oh, the Pasade, the Pasade, the Pasade, the Adam. Oh, the Pasade, the Adam. Oh, the Pasade, receive it, receive it, receive, 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 receive the fire, receive it. The Shakade, the Pacade, the Adam. Yeah, I just feel like we're supposed to raise up a 
a shout. So I'm going to count to three, and we're just going to raise up a, a warrior shout to the Lord, declaring his power. All together on the count of three, and you're just going to release that which is on the inside of you. One, two, three. Yeah, Jesus! I just declare over you that the Lord is more than enough, that the captain of the host is more than enough for what you need today, that he's the God of breakthrough on your behalf. He's your God of breakthrough. He's already paid for your healing. He's already paid for your peace. He's gone before you. He prepares the way before you. I just thank you, God. I declare over this people that this is a people of breakthrough in the name of Jesus and nothing will stop your will from coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Come on up here. If you got Mary in your name, God wants you to be Mary. He's going to talk to you right now. The Lord says to tell you guys, your name is an old-fashioned name, but he's doing a new thing in your life right now. He has called you by a new name. You're not Marie. You're not Mari. You are Mary. And he says he is doing a brand new thing in your life. He is opening a door. There are some financial issues that the Lord is turning right now on your behalf. There are some things that have been stuck. Some things that have not been working out. And you say, how come no matter what I do, this thing's not working out? I just need some help from heaven. And the Lord says it is now. He has released it to his Marys. He says he has called you Mary, not Martha, for a reason. And he says he is, he is elevating you right now and opening doors. There are some things in your home that need uh, fixing. And the Lord says he is fixing those things himself. Not by your might, not by your words, not by your efforts, not by your work, not by anything, but by the power of God. You'll know that you'll know that you know it's God in your life. Amen. Oscar. I see angels all around you and prosperity from the top of your head, Oscar, to the soles of your feet. Wherever you step, whatever business you take out there, there's going to be such a wide door open of prosperity for you. It's time, Oscar. It's time. You're gifted. Your hands are anointed to bring prosperity for the kingdom of God. Receive it. You're God's chosen. Dude, you're God's chosen. And he loves you. He loves you. You can hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. You can run, but you cannot hide. 
because the light of the glory of the Lord is upon you, Oscar. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. We're going to be concluding, but before we do, if you come from another country, I want you to come line up here because we're going we're gonna to impart into you. If you come from another country, very quickly, can you come on up here? If you are from another country, if this is not your mama land, come on up. Come on up. Come on. I know we've got some Poland. We've got some China. We've got some uh, UK, we, Canadian, everything, everything. Now, Richard and Christina, Pastor Brian, all, Jamie, come on. I want you guys to come up and pray for these guys. We impart into you. We adopt you into our land, and we welcome you, and we receive the anointing on you, and we partner with that anointing right now. Yoli, you want to come and pray? Ali, wherever you are. Praise you, Father. Praise you, pray. Praise you, praise you. Just go ahead and give them what you want them to have. Give them everything. All of it. Give them all of it. Just give them everything. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, come on, come on. Just give it to them. The rest of you, if you got some impartation, Susan, come on. Just give it to them. Stand behind them, stand in front of them. Just shower them. In fact, can everybody come on up and give them whatever it is you want? If you think you didn't get it, you did, but give it to them. Ask God to give it to them. Everybody, come on, Mark, everybody. Come on, everybody, come on up and give to these guys. Give it to them, give it to them, give it to them. Come on, Layla. Come on, you got so much in you. Give it to them. Come on. Nobody in the seats anymore. We're all up here. We're all up here giving out. Mary Francis, come on, you and your crew. Come on, give it to them. All you guys, come on. Just bless them. Just shower them. And the ones who couldn't be here, the ones who had to go shopping, we give it to them too. We give it to them, every one of them. More, 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 more. Bless them. Bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless each one. Bless each one in Jesus' name. We give you houses and cars and bank accounts and millions and trillions of dollars. We give you open heavens. We give you the word of God. We give you land. We give you property. We give you the favor of God, everything. We give you children if you want them. We give you good children if you have them. Lord, I thank you right now, Father. Divine intervention, Father. We call your household saved, blood bought, sanctified, redeemed. We speak the voice of the Lord to be not only heard by you, but imbibed by you and transferable from you. We say that you have traveling mercies wherever you go, that you lack for no good thing, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. He has anointed you. You can preach, you can teach, you can do all the things that Jesus can do because he's inside of you. Praise be to your name. The Lord just showed me a vision of how much he loves all of you. He loves every single one of you. You, 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 everyone here in the house. He loves us 
so much with an enduring, everlasting love. And he showed me a vision of a gold heart, a glowing gold heart with the glory of the Lord that he has for every single one of you. And right now there's angels all in the house and they're all imparting these beautiful gold hearts into each of your hearts individually. And he says, just receive it. Receive my love, my beloved child, my beloved son, my beloved daughter. My love for you is so strong and I wanna impart it into you. My mercies for you are new every day and my love for you grows and grows every minute. In Jesus' name. We believe in you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We receive every drop, every bushel basket, every shipload, every seashore full of your love, your grace, your mercy, and your power. This is a power conference. As we close this magnificent conference, we declare, Jesus, you are the Lord of our lives. Jesus, we submit our lives to you. And we will take your power and not just use it for ourselves. We will go to the nation round about the earth and touch them with the power and the presence and the very person of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our precious English brothers and sisters. Thank you for Pastor. Thank you for Pastor uh, Steve. Father, now as we go our separate way, we are together united by Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of the Father. We declare this now in Jesus' mighty name and all the people say it. Amen! Hallelujah. you father before you leave if you are the one who still needs to give into the offering a thanksgiving offering make sure you do it because i see the usher walking around and he's just about to take them so give back give all give everything give to each other give it you know if you have twenty dollars ask the lord who does he want you to give it to in here somebody might need gas but God supplies all of our needs. Amen? Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Be blessed, be blessed.